In a world of brain-dead horror movies that no one asked for. Where gimmicks and loud noises have replaced being actually scary. One film will use talent and creativity to make a compelling horror film. This summer, prepare to feel the fear with Long Legs. Also, Nicolas Cage is in it. In a wasteland of cheap, lazy, terrible horror movies, I didn't even realize that in the back of my mind, I have kind of given up on seeing a genuinely good horror film lately. That was, of course, until last weekend when I saw Long Legs. Now, I only saw the trailer for Long Legs once, about a month ago, as part of the opening previews for a movie. And honestly, I didn't even remember much about it. But I guess it was impactful enough for me to write the name down on my future watch list. And boy, am I glad I did. Because I went into this thing blind, not knowing really anything about this film. I mean, hell, I didn't even know Nicolas Cage was in it. That was a surprise. And I was absolutely blown away by this film, for the most part. This film is a fantastic horror mystery thriller that showcases some of the most impressive technical filmmaking skills I've seen in a long time. Honestly, I could do several video essays on elevated filmmaking just using this movie. It's that well done, and it's so unique and refreshing. But above all else, it is so unnerving and tense the whole way through. No jump scares or stupid gimmicks here, just real fear and suspense. This movie is clearly influenced by great films like the Shining, Seven, and Silence of the Lambs, which if you're gonna take inspiration for your horror, murder, mystery film, those are some pretty top tier choices to use. The only thing I will say before I give my scores is that I do think this film will not be as impactful seeing it at home. It really is one of those films that is made with the ambiance of the theater experience in mind. Now, I kind of always go back and forth on if that is a weakness or a strength in a film, so I'll let you decide that, but I'm just telling you, this film will not be as good seeing it at home, unless you have a giant theater in your house. Anyways, for my hoity-toity critic score, I give Long Legs a solid 8 out of 10. And for my Schmo score, the score for the average Joe Schmo, I give it another 8 out of 10. Now, I'm going to try to explain my rating while giving as little as many spoilers as possible, but that being said, if you would like to see this movie completely spoiler free, which I highly recommend, this is where we part ways. Thanks for showing up and I want you to have a nice day. As I mentioned earlier, this movie is many master classes in filmmaking. And one of those great aspects is the sound design. Unlike most horror films that use sound to assault your ears for a cheap jump scare, which this is a tangent, but I don't really even consider those to be real scares. Well, you jumped. Yeah, because you physically hurt me with sound. My ears are bleeding. That's like me running up to someone, punching them in the stomach and saying, Ah, I scared you. See, you flinched. That's not scaring someone. That's just assaulting someone. They're responding to the physical harm you caused to them. So yeah, I don't consider movies that blast loud sounds into your eardrums as being scary. That's not scary. You're just physically harming people. Well, there is none of that in this film. In fact, if you're not really paying attention, you probably won't notice the sound design at all. But it is there, constantly elevating the feelings of fear, suspense, and tension by supporting the visuals from the background. That's how you do effective sound design. And the cinematography, oh, 
I could geek out all day about just the camera work in this film alone. This film is so fantastically stylized after 90s filmmaking with a little bit of 80s horror slasher vibes thrown in. They do so many interesting things with their shots in this film. I'll only talk about one because otherwise we'll be here all day. So one of the ways they build this never-ending tower of tension, suspense, and fear is when there is a shot of a single person in frame, there is always something in the background, like a dark corner or an open door or an empty room or hallway that you just can't help but look at. You want to focus on the person in the shot, but you can't stop your eyes from looking over, waiting for something horrible to appear behind them. And it makes every scene so much more unnerving and terrifying. And there are a lot of these subtle little effects that they do in this film that really pull all the horrifying elements together. And speaking of effects, there are quite a bit in this film, but the vast majority of them are all practical effects. Just simple tricks of the camera, but they are super impactful. There is some CGI, obviously, but it was probably about 20 or 30 seconds of the entire film, and you'd be hard-pressed to pick them out. Like I said, everything in this film is just screams how technically competent and masterful the people who made this film are at their craft. And on a lesser note, the acting is good throughout. All the performances keep you engaged and they all work. Even Nicolas Cage's manic, over-the-top performance worked in the context of this story. So, it begs the question, if the movie is so amazing, like I say, why the 8 out of 10 score? Well, because there is just one thing, one thing that I cannot overlook, and it happened in the last five minutes of the film. Now, I'm going to try to explain this while being as vague as humanly possible. That being said, this is your last warning. If you want to see the film spoiler free, which again, I recommend you do, this is your cue to leave, okay? Okay. So, in the end, after all the mysteries have been revealed and everything's out in the open, the main character rushes to stop the last horrific thing from happening. And she gets there before the bad thing happens and does nothing. She does absolutely nothing for no reason. There's nothing stopping her. She just stands there and watches the horrible thing happen and then immediately goes, oh yeah, I came here to stop this. I have autonomy and can actually do things. And then she pulls out her gun and puts an end to all of it. After the bad thing had already happened. What? This makes no sense. And to make it even worse, there is a certain plot device in this film that could have been used to explain why she just froze there and didn't do anything and watched the horrible thing happen. But they didn't use that. Hell, they could have just have her arrive late, not make it in time to stop the bad thing, and the results would have been the same. But no, she just stands there and does nothing again for no reason and it was so disappointing because i was fully invested in the narrative throughout the entire film until that moment it just completely ripped me out of the story because my brain was flooded with questions like what is she doing why is she just standing there and doing nothing why isn't she stopping what she could have easily stopped? And then after it's already over, she does stop it from continuing to happen. And because the whole film up until this point was so meticulously well done, it makes this narrative error stand out so much more. And even more so because it happens at the very end. And like I've always said, you can have a bad movie with a good ending, but you can't have a good movie with a bad ending. 
Now, fortunately for this movie, this is just the last five minutes. It's really more of a closing scene and doesn't really affect the overarching story or grander mystery of the film, but it does put a sour note on it in the end. It's still a good movie, just with one really weird big narrative problem in it, which again, probably wouldn't have been so bad if it didn't happen at the very end and it's not the last thing you leave the audience with. But there it is, that's why I had to give it an 8. However, if you're a fan of good classic horror mystery, I still highly recommend you go see Long Legs in theaters. I guarantee you it's still probably going to be one of the best things you'll see in theaters this summer. Anyways, thanks for being here. I appreciate you and I'll catch you at the next one.